All right, let's talk about pizza dough. Very first thing I like to start out with is the yeast because it takes time for it to activate and rise. Now let me bring this over here to you, get a close-up look. As you can see, it is activated, it has risen, okay? Important part is warm water with that. And I usually go about a quarter cup of water and then I throw in this yeast which is made specifically by Fleshman's here but for the um, the pizza crust itself. Now they do have different varieties and whatnot. They have fast activating or uh, something else rather, but I choose this specifically for pizza and I figure since that's what it's made for, it's going to make me a better crust. And I've tried the others and it does make a better crust. Now, according to the directions, you can just add it in here and just let it self-activate through your recipe, but I still like to make it rise. And all I do is a quarter cup of warm water, I do the whole package of that yeast, and I match the same amount with sugar so it can heat it up and rise and get real thick like it is now, okay? Simple. Three cups of flour, okay? Right here. One teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar. Now I like to put that around the outside there so it doesn't mix with the yeast that I'm going to put in here in a minute. One cup of water. Now the center is where I like to start adding in the uh, yeast. And I'll just drop it in there like that. As you can see it's just a big blob of foam now. That's the good. That's how you know you've got some good yeast. All right. Now, if you're not so big on the yeast flavor, you can cut this down. I've done it before for people. It's not a big deal, and it really doesn't affect the, the dough a whole lot. You can take half of this if you don't want as much yeast flavor as I'm going to put in there. And still, the same amount of ingredients and make a fantastic dough, okay, just so you know. Now, I'm going to do this completely by hand, and... Uh, get in there and mix it all up until I got a good dough. I've got a, a little bit of flour here if I need to add to it just a little bit here and there if it's too sticky and I'll be adding a little bit of water if it's too floury. Either way, let's get into it. Okay, now that's about what you want. You can see I've got most of the product all in there, all one hole. I think it's a little too sticky for my taste. I like it a little bit more manageable, a little bit easier to work with, so I'm going to add just a little bit more flour and work that in there. All right, that looks pretty good to me. This is one of those recipes where you just know as you go, okay, as far as, you know, whether it's too dry or not not uh, wet enough, sticky enough, and right now it's just perfect, okay. I'll be able to work with this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move it to a bowl that's got olive oil in it so it won't stick and dry out as it rests, okay. And we'll just put it in there, and I'm going to cover it with some uh, olive oil and let it rise. Okay, olive oil is just a teaspoon or so. It's just enough to cover it so it doesn't crack. You don't want it to expand and dry out and crack all over the place here on you. So this is what you want. There we go. You can see she's all lubed up, ready to go. Now I'm just going to do the old towel trick. Cover it up. Set it aside here and let it rise. It's going to take about an hour or so, and it'll double in size. When it doubles in size, you are ready to go. We'll come back here, visit it in an hour, and show you what it looks like. All right, let me show you this here. Okay, see how much bigger we've gotten. It's pretty much filled that whole bowl. Now, I give it a shake like that because I want to make sure it's loosened up off the sides here. That olive oil helps it. All you got to do, throw down your flour. Sucker just slide right on out. One handed is kind of a pain in the butt, but. Okay, let's just go upside down on it. There you go. Now, this is where we conclude on the pizza dough. Okay, I've actually got uh, different intentions. I'm going to make a calzone here with it. But uh, right here, all you do is pan it out into the size you want. Or if you want, you can separate it, you can freeze it. I don't care what you do with it, but that's your pizza dough. That's it right there here at the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. All right, now to make calzones out of this, 
you got to decide what size you want. I mean, you want to go those huge calzones that I've made before, which is an entire pizza dough recipe, which this is one pizza. Make about a uh, 16-inch pizza, which is a pretty good size. Um, you can just half it and make two ginormous calzones. But I'm going to just make uh, some mediocre ones. I'm going to cut it in fours. That way I can make one for each of us here in the house. And just like that. There we go. Ta-da! Okay, got them apart. A little bit of flour, a little dusting on top of each one, a little bit so they don't stick to each other. Because I am going to just throw them back here in this bowl. And work one at a time, okay? Uh, all we got to do is roll that bad boy out. That's the next step. I'm just going to roll that out in the thickness that I want. It's just going to be about a quarter inch. Okay, there we go. Got it all rolled out. Now I went ahead and pulled and stretched it down to where it's about an eighth of an inch, okay? Now I've got uh, all the ingredients here, as you can see. And, uh, you know, this is my homemade uh, pizza sauce. Now you don't have to go with that. You can just load it in with your cheese and your uh, meats, your veggies, your whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? But this is how easy it is, okay? Half of it, I'm going to go here with the sauce, okay? And I'm not going to go to town because sometimes it's good to just add sauce after this thing is cooked. Add it as you go. Everybody has their own little preference, okay? And I'm just going to do half of that, okay? Now, this cheese is mozzarella provolone mix, okay? It's kind of a half and half, which is really, really good for pizza, you know, but you can go all kinds of different cheese. You can throw some feta cheese in there if you want, have a little, little pop. Anyway, whatever. I've got some Canadian bacon. Let's go bam, bam, bam. One more, why not? Let's go some pepperonis. Okay. Now, a lot of times, too, as far as the cheese goes, now that I was thinking about loading these pepperonis on there, you can go ricotta cheese in these. These are awesome with ricotta cheese. Not going to do that today, though. Okay, so plenty of pepperoni in there. All right, now over here I got some prosciutto, which I'm probably saying wrong. Real expensive stuff. If you want to stay away from the price, then don't get this stuff. But I'm going to slap a nice piece right there and another piece right there. As you can see, we're pretty thick here. I'm just going to add just a teeny tiny pinch of cheese to kind of help glue it all together. Now, at this point, you can just fold it up, seal the deal, and get ready to cook it, okay? But I've got a little extra deal that I like, a little homemade mixture here I've got, a little remedy. And this just consists of olive oil, salt, uh, fresh garlic, fresh basil, fresh parsley, some oregano, some thyme, and some rosemary black pepper, and I like to put this right in the top layer that I'm going to fold over because it adds so much flavor to the inside here, okay? And doing it one hand here is a pain, so let me uh, close it down and do it with two. Okay, there we go. Got a little bit more spread out. Now, if you'll notice, I stayed away from the edges on everything, okay? See that? All the way around. I kept a nice edge so I can just take the top and I can just fold this bad boy over and I can just squeeze these edges together and fold them like you would like a pie crust more or less, okay? Okay, there we go. All you do is just fold over these sides and just pinch them all the way around. If you want, you can even stab it with a fork all the way around. Um, it's important to give it a little air to breathe here on top. So I'm going to put a few incisions here and then uh, let's get it here to the, uh, the pan which I've got some cornmeal thrown down so it won't stick and then we'll egg wash it. Okay, got it on there. Now you can see the size, 16 inch pan, you can see the size of my hand, how big this calzone is. 
kept this in half and you easily feed two people. Um, egg wash is just one egg and a tablespoon of milk. And uh, all you do is just brush it on the top here, get a nice golden glaze on it. Okay, there we go, nice even glaze. Right here I've got some sesame seed oil. Uh, I'm used to saying sesame seed oil from Chinese dishes. Sesame seeds. You don't have to throw that on there if you don't want. I mean, if you're trying to pass a drug test, then I surely understand not using the sesame seeds. Regardless, we're ready for the oven, which is set at 500 degrees. All right. Cows on in the oven, 500 degrees, about eight minutes. All right, let's check it out. Should be good to go. Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Woo. Damn it, man. That looks good. All right. Going for the close-up as it sizzles. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's cut it up and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, there you have it. Cut right in half. Get rid of the light here. Oh, yeah. Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen dot com brings you homemade calzones.